I note comments today by the opposition Senator Matt Canavan that the Workplace Gender Equality Agency report on gender pay inequality is useless data that breeds resentment and division. Well, Matt Canavan, who gets a lot right, is dead wrong on this. The faster the pay packets aren't skewed by gender but by performance, the quicker Australia will see productivity gains in its workforce. The report says the median gender pay gap is 19%. Airlines, banks and construction firms have the most significant gaps. Of companies with more than 5,000 employees, Virgin Australia had the worst gap, 41.7%. Qantas had a 30.7% gap. Commonwealth Bank, the worst of the big banks, 29.9%. But this is also about statistics, remember, they can be skewed. The Workplace Gender Equality Agency says it doesn't necessarily mean women are paid less for the same job. But what it does show is that, is that fewer women have been elevated to higher paid positions. In the case of the airlines, you could think pilots, for example. Have a listen. It reflects different composition, that, that in many cases, um, men are actually nearly doubly likely to be in the higher paying roles and women are 50% more likely to be in the lower paying roles. How do we think about getting women into more high paid roles and trying to balance the genders all the way through the organisations rather than clustering women in, in those lower paid uh, roles and occupations? Sarah McCann Bartler is the Chief Executive of the Australian Human Resources Institute who joins me now. Uh, many thanks for your time today. This is so right. I mean, if you educate people through universities and you've got more than 50% of people who are graduates coming through as women, you want them in the top positions. You want the pay to be equal because that's the best use of your brains in your economy. Hi, Ross. Absolutely correct. Uh, this reporting of the gender pay gap on an individual organisational basis is really interesting because it is part of a broader movement towards pay transparency. So you might remember that late last year, as part of the government's workplace legislation reforms, we saw pay secrecy clauses in individual contracts abolished made illegal as part of that legislative change. And now we have this gender pay gap reporting on an individual basis for organisations with 100 or more employees. What we know from international experience is that once gender pay gap reporting starts, and it happened in the UK, that gap starts to, to fall. Mary's yeah. absolutely right. Oh. Um, yeah. It's often structural. And there are ways to actually change it. I was going to ask you about that whole secrecy of pay thing and opening up, making it more transparent, which makes absolute sense to what you say. The question then is about performance. In other words, if two people sitting alongside, one says, I think I'd do a better job than you, and I think that it doesn't matter what, what, what gender the person is, that can breed some resentment inside a workplace. So does it work better when there's organised sort of labour, say, for example, in the public servants or, or where there's a, an award historically, more difficult when it comes to individual contracts, I would have thought. Well, not necessarily. You just need to have uh, a really robust um, performance framework that says uh, you will be rewarded for hitting your targets, for actually doing your job well. So there are ways to actually get around that while people are still paid for this in the same way, within the same bands for the same job, but it is really about performance. And it's interesting that you talk about performance in relation to the gender pay gap reporting that we're now seeing, because in a market where 38% of employers have told us they're still struggling to actually fill vacant jobs. Why wouldn't you actually be looking for the broadest pool to fill all of your jobs with actually the best people? And really, when um, Mary talked about uh, structural change being required in organisations to reduce the gender pay gap, um, what you want is you do want to see uh, women going through to those senior roles and the best people, whether they are male or female, filling those roles. And that's also going to drive productivity in the workplace. Actually, you just got me thinking there, Sarah. It's almost like as though the employment markets become a bit like, I don't know, your, your, your gas bill or your, your telecommunications bill. You've got to shop it around every now and again to make certain you've got the best deal. If people are not shopping around their employment, doesn't matter whether they're male or female, they might very well be falling behind in terms of 
you know, their pay simply because they're not testing themselves against the market. I'm going to flip that round also, though, Ross, because uh, what we've also um, heard from employers is that 25% uh, of employers still have an annual turnover of over 20%. Now, that's a lot of people leaving your organisation. So the question for a lot of employers is, how do we actually make retention a focus and make sure that people know that they have a future, that they are going to be promoted, again, whether they're male or female, into uh, more interesting jobs, jobs that um, grow their skills and, of course, grow their remuneration. But the one thing is to try and have more women eventually go to the upper echelons of these businesses across all range of skills to ensure that, A, the gender pay gap narrows and, B, that you've got the very best people in the very best positions in your place. You've hit the nail on um, the head right there, Ross. It really is about um, driving productivity through making sure that you have the best people in the best jobs and also that um, you keep the skills that you've got. And for people with high potential, you're really um, putting them in roles that um, drive performance outcomes for the organisation, but also job satisfaction and skills growth for those employees. Sarah, it's going to be fascinating just to see exactly how this pans out because this survey will be ongoing and it's only by shining a light on some of this that you do get some decent outcomes. Sarah, I really appreciate your time today. Many thanks.